All right, we're finally doing intervals. So intervals are gaps between the notes. And it's important to learn every single note that there is on your guitar. So here on this sheet, I've written out all the notes, starting from C, going to C. Now this is critical um, if you're looking into doing some arranging, um, so you know exactly what notes and what chords to use over what you're playing. So the notes starting from C, You've got a C here, then you go up a fret, you get a C sharp or a D flat, up another fret, D, D sharp, E flat, E, F, F sharp and G flat, G, G sharp, A flat, A, A sharp, B flat, B, C. E and E and B have no sharps, and C and C and there's another note. Fuck me. F, C and F don't have flats. Okay, so here are all the notes on your fretboard. You can go through that in your own time. Just pause the video right now. Start on C, which is the third fret on the A string, and you can count up and then learn your fretboard. So the first interval that we're gonna talk about is the flat second interval, which is a movement of one fret. In a riff context, I'm only going to be playing power chords in this video because it's just going to make things so much easier. Um, when you are making your own riffs using these intervals, feel, feel free to use any chord combination uh, you'd like or even single notes that you'd like, starting from anywhere on the fretboard. So here we're just going to start with an E, an E power chord. Now if I move this chord up a flat second, I get the F. Okay, and as well as going up, we can go down. So if I play here, uh, E here, with my root note on the A string, and I can move it down. And of course, you can move up and down using that same interval, starting with the, the E, to the F, finishing on this E flat note here. Cool, so that's your first interval. The second one is a natural second, which is a movement of two frets. So again, I'm gonna play starting on an E. Moving up two frets to this F sharp chord here. And again, I can move that down. And then when you're songwriting or making riffs, you can combine these two intervals. Moving up a flat second, back down, then going down a flat second. And then going down another flat second there, I mean natural second, and then down to the flat second. So I'm moving up and down natural seconds and flat seconds, which are relative to the chord that I'm playing. So up a flat second, so seven plus two to the ninth fret. Then I can go from the ninth fret to the eighth fret, moving down a flat second. And that's just a nice little way you can use those two intervals. The next one is a minor third, which is a movement of three frets. So starting on E, moving up three frets to the G, then moving down to the C sharp. So seven plus three is 10, back down to seven, then seven minus three is four. And there 
there from the C sharp chord, I went down another minor third. Cool. Next one is the major third, which is a movement of four frets. Starting on E. Uh, moving up four frets would be to 11. Then going back down four frets from the seventh fret is three. If you go back to my Mugwa trick video, it's basically going from one power chord down a major third to the next chord. And one thing that's kind of cool to do is start with your starting chord, in which case it's an E here on the seventh fret going down a major third, down four frets to the third fret, then going down a flat second. Now you can go up um, a flat second, then up a natural second. And just to repeat myself before, you can do this with single notes as well. Now, the next one is a perfect fourth, which is a distance of five frets. Starting on E. Now, a slightly easier way you can think about this is if your starting chord has its root note on the A string, to play a chord, the play, to play the chord down, a perfect fourth, you just go up the strings. So here I'm playing an E power chord, 799 on A, D and G. Then I'm playing the B power chord, again same fret, 799, but this time on E, A and D. Sounds kind of cool if you use a minor triad. On both chords, so it becomes an E minor and then a B minor. So from A, to G, 7 on A, 5 on D, 4 on G, then the same fret, 7, 5, 4 on E, A and D. And tremolo pick. Next one, everyone knows, is a flat five, the tritone, a distance of six frets. Let's start playing the power, let's start here now. So we've got our E chord here, then move up six frets. So this B flat chord. You can also play the chord here. So the frets would be one on A, three on D and three on G. With with your riffs, um, if you if you play it in a different if you play it on a different starting note, let's say here on A. Another way you can think of that is if you go down a string, then to your right one fret. So 
down the string, up a fret. It's like that mayhem riff. It's three tritones, so start with the low E, B flat, E, back to B flat. Now the next one is a perfect fifth, which is a distance of seven frets. So starting on the low E here, going up seven frets. Another way you can think of that is if you go down a string, then up two frets. So if my root notes on the low E here, the perfect fifth upwards is on the second fret of A. And a perfect fifth interval with a root note is a power chord. So you've got a root note here, which is E. Then if you add the perfect fifth here, which is this B note here on the second fret of A, you're playing an E power chord. And this applies everywhere across the neck. So if I'm playing B here, if I go down a string, up two frets, play the perfect fifth, that's an F sharp. So E power chord, B power chord. And it's a uh, kind of typical thrush thing to go, to alternate between your root note, a perfect fifth and a flat fifth. <laughs> Now the next one is a sharpened fifth or a minor sixth. So if you get your starting note here, low E, similar to the power chord, down down a string, then up three frets. This is also moving down a perfect fourth in reverse. So, you've got your low E, and you go down a string and up three frets. You're playing the C power chord here, three, five, five on A, D, and G. It's also kind of cool if you're working with another guitarist, they play the E up here. And then you finish on that chord, or you can just do a uh, slight variation on the chord by using this dyad here, which is a third fret on A, second fret D. So one guitarist go. And the other could go. Or whatever you want to do. The next one is a major sixth, a distance of nine frets. So here's your E. And then there's your major sixth here, which is a C sharp chord. Again, you can play that here on the fourth fret on A and the sixth frets of D and G. And again, that's just a minor third going down in reverse. So seven here to four. Because they're both E notes, you got an E here and an E here. The next one is minor seventh, a distance of 10 frets, or a natural second in uh, reverse. So you've got here your E, then fifth fret on A, 
or tenth fret on E, you've got your uh, minor seventh. Same chords, but again starting on a different uh, E. Very Iron Maiden. Next one, there's only a few left guys, don't worry, all right. <laughs> Major seventh, which is a distance of 11 frets, or a flat second in reverse. So E, going up 11 frets. Or sixth fret on A, playing the power chord. And with single notes. The next one is the octave. Now the octave is the same note you play, but just higher. So I'm gonna be playing two E's, one of which is the lower E here on the open E. Then the octave up, which is the E on the A string on the seventh fret. So any of those kind of... Those kind of pedally riffs, you're just basically playing the octave. Um, there I was going from the octave and sliding up a flat second. Or even here on the 12th fret you can play. So those are the main intervals, as in the core intervals, but I'm going to extend it slightly because these ones are really cool. This is the flat ninth, which is one fret higher than the octave, 13 frets. Yeah, so you're going from an E to an F, that's an octave higher. So you're still playing an F, so it's basically a flat second, but it's not a flat second because it's a higher note than the flat, sec flat second. So that bit in Freezing Moon. Playing a flat ninth. And you can build on these intervals, um, buried by time and dust. So here I've got my root note on A, and I move up a perfect fifth to the seventh fret on A. So, um, so that's an E note. So you've got an A note here, fifth fret and E, and an E note on A. It gets a little bit confusing on the seventh fret, and then I'm playing the ni uh, flat nine here, which is a B flat. But I'm playing that on the eighth fret of the D string, and then the second time round that riff. I'm playing the octave instead of the flat nine. And that motion uh, loops twice round, then you play it up a fret. Oops. If I remember that riff. And that riff there. So this is descending intervals. So you start here on an E, then you go down a major third to this C note here, which is the 10th fret on D. So 9th fret G, 10th fret G, then down another minor third on the 7th fret on D, then down a perfect fourth. Is that perfect fourth? Yep, that's perfect. Which is the seventh fret on A. Then I go down another major third. 
up a perfect fifth. Then I go down, and that is a minor sixth. Which is this, so you're going from the 10th fret on A to the 6th fret on E then up a 5th on, on the 8th fret of A Now, just by playing that riff, I think a lot of you will understand the amazing thing about intervals is because it makes everything, absolutely everything, every chord, every riff is an interval or made up of them, just stacked together <laughs> Okay, uh, I've got two more here. One is the natural ninth, which is a distance of 14 frets. So low E to the ninth fret on A, or 14th fret A. Now the natural ninth is more used in chord applications as when you have a power chord, but your little finger is playing the natural ninth. So here on this A chord, the frets will be five, seven, nine on E, A, and D. And again, you can move this ninth around to the flat ninth as well. And in like a tech deathy kind of thing. Something like that. And the next interval I'm going to go through is the sharp 9 or minor 10th, which is a distance of 15 frets. Um, so you've got your low E and 10th fret on A or 15th fret on E. And again, this is the 9th shape that we went through, except your little finger extends out another fret, which technically makes a minor chord. So the frets here would be 5, 7, and 10, so it's quite a big one. Like that riff in Kings of the Carnival Creation is such a good riff to learn about intervals, because you start with this B power chord here. And you're basically playing a ninth chord, then a B minor chord, because you're using the sharp ninth here. next bit, the same thing. Yeah, so that is a, well, this is a long video. Um, yeah, so here's all the intervals you ever need to know, and this is the only music theory that you really you only really need um, because everything derives from this. Every scale is made up of, of these octaves. Um, every riff is made up of octaves. Every single note lead line in black metal is made up. Everything is this. Every music genre is intervals. This is the only music theory that you really need. <laughs>